Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and this time we'll be checking out Markov, The Assault. The Assault is sort of the, uh, highly tanky offensive class. Your job is to use your big, nasty, hard-hitting weapons to piss off the monster and make him want to rip you in half like Bone Book. And to that effect, you've got a big fancy arc cannon that he's kind of showing you right now, and he's also got a machine gun, some big explodey mines, and in the event you don't want to get ripped in half like a phone book, he's also got a personal shield, which is the same for both him and the tier 2 support, Hyde. And, uh, yeah, I kind of like him. He's this crazy, cybernetic Russian guy. It's an interesting, uh, persona, really. So again, we're joined by my, uh, a couple of my buddies. Got Artrin and Mozzie K's. And we need to find us that Goliath. And funny enough, he's pretty close at hand. Our uh, puppy, Ivaria, was nice enough to notice that uh, he's either lagging or something and didn't really get that far. And he manages to try to like eat a couple monsters right in there in that burnout zone before he has, like, connection problems. And so, after I use my arc cannon, which does a lot of damage, but it doesn't last very long before it has to recharge, I like to throw down these big fancy mines. Because, while it's got a very long range, Markov's machine gun is kind of piddly. It doesn't do a lot of damage. And this is where Sick Bird disconnects, and the monster AI takes over and starts kind of running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Fucking rocks and being generally disagreeable. And so despite the way it seems initially, monster AIs aren't that bad once they get their bearings and kind of figure out what, where they are in the game. Uh, he does try to kind of have a snack there real quick before taking off to the edge of the dome right as it's about to go down. So, one of the reasons why I say the monsters are pretty good is they pretty much know a good route to get, like, really efficient feeding done. And he immediately books it over this ramp and into the distance. So, he knows exactly where he wants to go, or it wants to go. I don't know if you want to pertain a gender to an AI or not. But uh, it, it runs off way off into the distance where we're chasing it now. And starts eating stuff. So we're just gonna have to chase it down. Now, the AIs don't necessarily seem to do a lot of sneaking. And the, the thing with being a monster and sneaking is that it doesn't leave these very obvious tracks, and it probably would, you know, a person would probably jump a lot less. I do like that it can knock over trees, like smaller trees, which is a nice way of indicating where the monster was most recently. And then he kind of runs off back here past these old rotted out bunkers, kind of looks like an old aircraft hangar, and that's where I lose him. He actually, from where you're seeing right now, he goes off to like the right over there around the corner, sort of where I'm running right now, and starts feeding while I kind of see if he's trying to evolve back here behind these trees, which is often a thing. Going to, like, the edges of the map or in dark, hidden corners is a good place to wait out hunters so that you can evolve. But he, he eventually ticks off some birds, and we're gonna go try and make him dead again. And for various obscure reasons, I just like to throw down mines to kill stuff. And our puppy, Everose, gets caught by a tyrant, which is kind of like a crocodile turtle. There's various really big monsters that can kind of capture you and try to eat you, and if you don't have a friend nearby to help you, and you're not very good at getting out on your own, you might end up dead. Which kind of sucks for your team. It's an interesting way of kind of like punishing people for straying off without anybody nearby, just like in Left 4 Dead with, like, the special zombies. So we're actually gonna skip ahead here a moment, because, I mean, I'm sure you guys like watching me romp around through the woods for 20 minutes, but 
I just decided you probably didn't want to see that. So we'll walk past the Venom Hound Nest. I think that's what comes out of there. And a little bit further back here behind this energy transformer. Really nice place to evolve, actually, if you're playing the monster. Um, we're going to run back into him. Our teammates are going to be able to corner him back here behind this scientific outposty building. And the, the AI has actually been taken over by Shank Killen. So I'm going to grab out the Arc Mines. If you're entering a, a match late, it's kind of nice to put these down because they take a moment to activate. That way, if the monster tries to run at you, you can just run back towards your mines and he'll get a bunch of chunks torn out of his armor. It looks like Mozzie's already used his sniper rifle that does armor piercing to put a few holes in the monster. And those are those little blue circles you see covering him. If you shoot at one of those little areas, they will actually do bonus damage to the monster. Which is why my big fancy arc cannon, um, which can arc to multiple points on the same target or multiple targets, has done a whole bunch of damage. And unfortunately, I'm not able to get him to run over top of any of my mines. And Artrin, from what I remember, missed his initial orbital strike, so he's just going to get away for the moment. And so right over this hill is where we just killed that turtle monster that was eating Evaria, our hubby. And that's his skeleton, which means that at some point during our magic loop-de-loop -loop where we're trying to track down the Goliath, he came over and saw that we'd killed that and ate it, so we ended up giving him a free meal. And so I, I noticed that this lovely running monster, this two-legged, kind of, almost like an ostrich-type critter, has uh, got a buff. And that means that you're going to get a run speed buff. The few times that certain monsters do spawn a buff, they usually spawn the same type of buff that's particular to them. Which is kind of cool. Give some predictability to a game that's otherwise kind of random and scattered for monsters trying to murder you and where the big Goliath beasties trying to eat other stuff and eventually kill you. And so we'll actually, as we run back over to this main power plant facility, run back into the monster who has stopped for a little mid, uh, mid walkway snack and we're going to make him dead. The way you can tell he's been eating is those carrion birds we just ran over top of. So as my gun runs out of juice, I'm gonna pop down a few mines. Because, like, our whole team jumped up here onto this ledge, and if he wants to survive, he's probably gonna come back and try to kill one of them. And sure enough, he hits that last one that I put down. And so I'll put down a couple more, and I will try to... Get out my arc cannon, but the monster manages to corner himself, which is the perfect opportunity for Artrin to nail him with an orbital bombardment, which kills him pretty much instantly. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, didn't really get to see too much heavy tanking for the assault, but I've got some more videos of him and the various other characters. Just not the tier 2 medic or the tier 2 hunter, but I do have footage of them, I'm just not playing them. So, um, if you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got a whole bunch more of this stuff coming. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. And toodaloo, everybody.